Looks like it's snowing in the workshop. Welcome back to my workshop. Now today's a follow on video from the last one where I made this silicon mould yeah, to cast one of these. Okay, this is off a Singer sewing machine treadle. Um, now the idea is that is going into a resin crafting table. It sounds very swanky. Uh, I've never done this before. So we're going to make it up as we go along. Uh, now the idea is I'm going to make a crafting table using this. Okay, this is a single sewing machine treadle and the casting I did is going to sit inside the table. Uh, let's show you what I mean. Okay, so the idea is this is going to be a, a crafting table for Mrs. Little Workshop, uh, but I want a river table and I want a live edge river table. Now, obviously, you all know that live edge wood is very expensive, uh, but I need it in a particular shape. Now, this is the size of the table. I've marked it out with masking tape so you can see looks quite big on the video but it's not that big uh, and my insert is going to be going in the middle of the table okay and then i'll have live edge wood on either side and then resin down the middle okay so the first thing i'll do is figure out how i'm going to make the live edge wood So that's both my pieces of wood cut out from the template. Uh, it looks a bit clunky and a bit Disney at the moment. Uh, it's all nice sharp edges, which are no good to anyone. Now on these edges, uh, really on a live edge piece of wood like this, okay, you have the bark and obviously you've got this slope. Okay, so what I've got to do now is emulate that slope along here. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, let's get this on the bandsaw. So the edge has been drying overnight. Uh, it's still looking a bit Disney. So what I've got to do is put some false grain in it. I've no idea if this is going to work. I'm going to use a fork to indent the wood, then stain it, and then wipe it off. <laughs> okay, right, let's get the masking tape off. Okay, so my plan is, this looks a bit pretend. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bits of bark and literally form them around this and stick them on. So my pretend live edge is sitting over here now. Uh, let's get on with a frame for the mould of the table. Now, obviously, I've marked this out with tape. You don't need to see that anymore, so I can take this away. Right, so all I've made is a really, really bad frame. Now, obviously, you don't have to go this much, but because that's what I've got, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to be lining this with uh, plastic anyway, uh, so it doesn't stick, okay? But all I've got is a couple of bits of construction timber, Chopped them into a square, just very slightly bigger than the actual tabletop. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit twisty. So I'm going to actually screw it to this worktop. All right, so let me get on with that.
Right, so now I've got my frame screwed to this worktop. Uh, now, make sure that when you do this, you can take this apart. Okay, so I've got screws in the ends here and in the top. So when the table's all set, I can unscrew this, unscrew this, and then pull this off. Okay, let's line the inside. Right, so what I'm going to use to line it is this stuff, which is the multi-wall polycarbonate. Now, I think you're supposed to use polypropylene but I'm going to use polycarbonate because that's all I could get hold of. Uh, what I've done is I've cut my base and all my sides uh, and then what I'm going to do is hot glue them into the frame uh, and make sure there's no leaks. Now this stuff is the corrugated, this corrugated stuff. So I've got a little bit of a concern that it's going to leave a ribbed pattern, but that will be the bottom, okay, because I'm casting this top side up. Okay, so what I've got to do is stick this into the mould with my hot glue and then seal it with some silicon. So now all my plastic is in, uh, it's got staticky, picked up a lot of dust, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. All right, what I'm going to do now is just seal all around all the edges with some silicon. Okay, I don't know if this is the right thing to use. Uh, I've heard a lot of people call it caulking. Uh, now, whether I'm supposed to be using decorator's cork or silicon, I don't know. I'm going to try silicon, see what happens. All right, so basically I've got to seal all around the edges. All right, some of the plastic stuck in uh, with hot glue. Uh, I've also siliconed all around the edges. Uh, I've also hot glued all around the outside edge, just in case it does leak, and then it will sort of stem the flow. But my trusty old glue gun that I've had for about 15 years had just decided, that's it, I've had enough. It's broken, so I've got to go and buy another one. Okay, so I'm going to leave this now, leave it to dry overnight, and hopefully it won't leak. Right, so I'm now in the dining room. This is where I start getting nervous. Uh, what I've got to do is first mix up just a little bit of resin to float on the bottom. Now this should serve a couple of purposes. Uh, first of all, it will make sure the bottom is actually sealed. Um, and also, if I mix up enough, I want to coat my pieces of pretend live edge wood uh, and hopefully that will minimize the bubbles. Uh, so I'm gonna mix up some resin enough to just float on the bottom. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the resin I'm gonna use for this project is this stuff, which is Resin Pro. Uh, I've used it before and it was really good. So I'm gonna try it again. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna use up my old stuff. And then I've got a new batch down here, which I'll use for the rest of it. Okay, let's start mixing up some resin. Right, so my pretend live edge wood for the river table is now done. 
Uh, I've given it a coat of resin just to seal it for when it goes into the table. All right, so there it is. It's on the floor at the moment, obviously drying. Let's uh, have a close look. Yeah, so for a couple of old scaffold planks, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so I floated my first level here. Um, got a little bit of a leak over in the corner there, uh, but I think it's under control. Uh, I've also now coated my pretend live edge wood here, which you might have seen in another video. Uh, so that, once that's dry, that'll be ready to go in here. Right, let's let it set. Okay, so this has been setting again overnight. Um, so we've done two layers of resin so far, but only thin. Uh, because it's a craft table, and because this is what Mrs. Little Workshop wants, uh, she wants a little bit of glitter in it. So all I'm gonna do is because it has set, I'm gonna quickly hit it with a hot air gun to soften it a little bit, sprinkle some glitter down the middle, and then leave it to set again overnight. So let's do that. Okay, so that's that done. You probably couldn't even see that on the camera, but I can assure you it's there, and I'll probably have it stuck to my face for the next four days. Right, let's mix up some more resin. Right, so this is now ready for its next pour. Uh, now this is the most important pour because it's the one where this is gonna be put inside. Now, if you haven't seen my other video, check it out. I made a, a mold for this and I cast this. Let me show you uh, what it was cast from. Let's go back into the workshop, back this way. Okay, so if you remember, or if you've seen the uh, other videos, I made this mold out of silicon, cheap as chips, uh, of this, which is the uh, Singer emblem, and this is gonna be the base. Okay, so now this has gotta go into the table. What could go wrong? Let's mix up some more resin. Okay, so as this is a Frank's Little Workshop masterpiece, uh, I'm gonna put in one of my little tokens here, which I got from Von Hank. Okay, this is gonna be actually encased in the resin. So I'm literally just gonna pop this in. Pop. All right, that's in. That'll obviously be covered uh, with the final coat of resin. All right, let's get some more bubbles out. All right, so what I've got to do now is a final coat. Hopefully this is gonna be the final finished coat. Uh, for that, I'm gonna to have to use Glass Cast 3. Uh, so far, I've been using Glass Cast 50, okay, which is obviously thicker, but this doesn't self-level very well. Uh, so Glass Cast 3 
Um, I can only pour this up to a maximum of three millimeters deep, which is not very deep, but it should be deep enough. Um, so I'm just going to mix this up. Now be careful, glass cast 50, okay, by weight is 100 to 45. Glass cast 3 is 100 to 50. Okay, so slightly different ratios. Uh, but let's get mixing and then pour the final coat on. Right, so hopefully that's all the resin done. Uh, what I'm going to do now is turn my attention to the, uh, the actual frame. I'm not going to do a full restoration. I'm literally just going to clean this with um, a stiff brush and some soapy water and then maybe touch up some of the, uh, the bare metal parts. Okay, so I won't really cover that. I'll just get a bit cleany. Right, okay, so this is probably the most nerve-wracking part about the whole thing. Uh, I've got to try and get it out of the mould. <clears throat> I've covered it in a piece of paper because I don't want to scratch it. Uh, when I route, I don't want to gouge into it. And also, I don't want you seeing it until the end. Right, let's try and get this out of the frame. Right, so it came out of the mould in one piece, which is great news. Uh, all I've got to do now is clean off, let me show you these bits. Uh, on the edge here, there's all these bits of silicon, yeah, which has obviously come out of the mould. I've got to get those off, but they don't come off very easily. It's well sticky. One problem is where I've used this polycarbonate instead of the polypropylene, uh, this stuff has got all these ribs on it. Yeah, so on the bottom, I've ended up with this pattern. Now, I was hoping to avoid hours and hours and hours of sanding, um, but the bottom might need to be sanded and polished. The top is okay, uh, but the bottom is a little bit ribby. I have to see what that's like. Uh, also, uh, all around the edges, so bear this in mind when you're taking it out of the mould, all around the edges, there's a very sharp lip. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the edge here, uh, now here is a razor sharp edge, where obviously this is sunk down a little bit, and it's proper sharp, like it will cut your fingers. But what I'm going to do is, I should be routing that, uh, so it's got a little chamfer on the edge. Right, okay, let me get some silicon off. Like snowing in workshop. Right. Well, I was going to try and get away without uh, without actually sanding it all down. But if you look here, you can see all of the pattern that was left by the polycarbonate. So I've got to sand it all down. Working through the grits, probably starting about 80 grit and then going right up to a thousands or grit. What a job! So 
you can see after a couple of minutes that the lines have all come out now so I've got to carry on going until this is all smooth right onwards <laughs> Right, so a very quick update for you. Uh, so far I've sanded it up to about 400 grit. I've used this many sanding discs. There's lots. Uh, managed to get rid of all the ribs. Uh, so I'm gonna carry on now. Ah, sandy, sandy, sand. Right, so now I've been sanding for hours and hours and hours, uh, and I've run out of discs. Uh, I've got up to 1,200 grit, but what I do have is some paper. Uh, now I've got some 1,500, I've got some 2,000, I've got some 3,000, but what it does mean, I've got to do it by hand. So now I've got to do this all by hand. Here we go. Uh, now I'm going to try and hit it with a bit of Yorkshire grit. Okay, I don't know if this is the right stuff to use. Um, it's an abrasive paste, so hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to put some of this on and then buff it off and then think about a polish. Well, the Yorkshire grit seems to have worked okay. Um, so now I'm going to try some polish. I'm just using some Auto Glim. This is just super resin car polish. Hopefully it's going to work. If it doesn't, I'm going to end up having to flat it down again. I don't want to do that. Uh, so I've tried it on the edge. It appears to work. Let's give it a go, shall we? So now the bottom's all polished. Uh, I've turned it over because I wanted to increase the chamfer on this edge. Let me just show you. Okay, on the top edge now, I've increased this chamfer. Okay, and all I've had to do is because of the type of bit I'm using, it's got a guide bearing on it. Uh, I put a bit of masking tape around the edge to stop it scratching. So I've done that now. Uh, so I guess now we can fit the base. So that's it, it's finally done. Uh, so from a scaffold board made into artificial wood uh, and an old sewing machine and a bit of resin, I've ended up making this, which is a craft table. Let's have a quick look. Ooh, very nice. Let's have a look at some beauty shots. Right, so that's it. The craft table is all finished. It's now up in the craft room, uh, being used already. Uh, so no one will probably ever see that again. Uh, right, just a couple of things that we've learned during the process of this. Uh, first of all, don't use this stuff for the mold, okay? This is polycarbonate, and it's the, uh, the stuff that looks like corrugated cardboard, okay? Because that leaves lines all over your casting, which you then have to spend two days sanding out okay so it doesn't stick to this but you do have to do lots of sanding afterwards uh, 
Okay, also another couple of things to remember is the temperature of your resin. Make sure it doesn't get too cold because it goes slightly milky, uh, which, is, which is no good. Okay, so make sure your resin is at the right temperature when you're mixing it and when you're pouring it. Uh, also, one thing we've learned is you can layer different brands of resin. So I started off with Resin Pro uh, and then run out and then I've used glass cast on top of that. Not mixing them together, but layering one on top of the other. And that seems to work okay. They bond together okay. It's all good. Uh, okay, and finally, the main thing to remember is you're not going to be able to do this on the cheap. Okay, although I saved a lot of money making the, uh, the faux live edge wood, uh, which turned out really well, uh, the actual resin does cost a lot of money. So don't think you're going to make one of these for nothing. All right. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I've enjoyed doing it and I've learned lots of things for next time. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So that it. That. Okay, and the uh, the casting I did. Whoa. Ah. Right, so this has now been uh, 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 <clears throat>